Hello! So, it is time for UBL Season 7 Power Rankings, and I am not alone. Joining me is the one and only Fat Rat. Yo, everyone, it's everyone's least favorite rodent, right after Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> so, um... That guy's full name is Charles Entertainment Cheese. I, I, you, sometimes you learn something new every day. That's what we hear. Uh, what we do here, apparently. Um, but what we're here to actually do is do the UBL Season Seven Power Rankings. Um, so first of all, I want to say, um, Kana, the owner of the Division League thing, um, he's done a PR of his own, uh, which you should absolutely check out. I will attempt to remember to put the uh, link in the description. That is an attempt. Um. And the only reason why uh, we didn't do this all as a trio is just because we couldn't find time to all do it together. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so UBL Season 7, it's, uh, it's Nat Dex, VGC, no Dynamax. So that means your, your Megas are all good to go, um, no Z moves, no Dynamax, no Cut moves, so, um, like, you know, Return, Hidden Power, Tail Glow, all that good stuff's not here. Um, 10 teams, we're going to be ranking them, we're going to go through all of them, and, uh, between our, uh, brain cells that I can probably count on one hand, uh, we'll try and figure this out. <laughs> you can count, you can count your brain cells, I can't. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're going to try, so, me and Rat haven't actually played this format, whereas Kana actually has, um, but, um, we also have differing opinions on what uh, teams are going to, what we think are probably good teams. So, go watch his for reference, because we're probably going to make some reference to that first, and it's also going to be probably shorter than ours, because his was only like 45 minutes, and there's two of us going back and forth here, so we're probably going to make discussion on teams. So, it's going to be longer. You can see the length of the video, because you're watching it now. I don't know it, because we're like two minutes in. <laughs> But if it's anything like the other PRs we've done, it's going to be long. Yep. Uh, right. So, um, let's start off. Oh, I should mention as well. Um, so, uh, we've got three new coaches um, that are all actually uh, friends of mine outside of the, the, the league. And as a result, um, and as well as the fact that I, uh, I actually helped make half of the teams in this league <laughs> so we're gonna get a bit this is hopefully gonna give a bit more insight into some of the teams um those being all the friends that i uh, invited to this league um from outside the ubl uh, to come play they're all pl have played vgc just not draft um as well as uh, i helped make a couple of other teams as well so i've kind of got a lot more insight into some of these teams so hopefully that will make this a bit more interesting to talk about as well Sorry for this just, like, rambling for three minutes, Rat, but should we get started? Indeed we should. So, we have our first team here, which is the Accrington Amphoros. And their team consists of Incineroar, Megalopony, Latios, Ludicolo, Pelipper, Sylveon, Seismitoad, Drudigan, Clinklang, and Machoke. This is coached by Jan Mass. So... Initial thoughts? So, I really like the team. It's got really solid speed tiers. I love Incineroar. That's just the poster child for VGC. You can't go wrong with good ol' Incin. No. Yeah. But the issue is I feel it's way too reliant on rain. So, uh, I think that's a fair criticism. Um, it was definitely more reliant on rain, uh, before the one grace period change that we had. <laughs> we... <laughs> We had one grace period change, and that was uh, with this team. They originally had Tornadus Incarnate. Um, they changed it for Latios and also picked up Machoke as well. Um, personally, like that change a lot because Tornadus Eye feels pretty much only good in rain. I'm not the biggest fan of Torn Eye unless it's in rain, and even then, it kind of leans too much into rain, in my opinion. Whereas Latios is just a good Pokemon. Yeah, you can use it in many different situations. Yeah. Um, it gives the team. A, a fast tailwind and a bulky tailwind. Um, so again, I help make this team, and there's a reason why I do 
like this rain team over pretty much any other rain team I've ever seen in my life. And that is the three core Pokemon in the rain mode. Ludicolo, Pelipper, and Seismitoad are just good Pokemon by themselves and do not need rain to be good. Um, Pelipper, great support Pokemon, gets Tailwind, gets Wide Guard, does pretty solid damage with Skulls and Hurricanes. Um, can also pivot out into some of the other bulkier pieces. You know, you've got your Incineroar that you want to get in. And also pivot into the rain pieces themselves. Um, Seismitoad gets Water Absorb, which is honestly just nice. Um, means it's just like if people want to bring opposing water types into rain and you just bring a nice bulky Seismitoad, you have that as an option and also great coverage. And then Ludicolo is just actually a really solid Pokemon because um, it gets Fake Out and gets good supporting options, so you don't even need to use it in rain to be good. These are three Pokemon that, while are very strong in rain, have applications outside of rain, and that's why I like it specifically. That's a very fair, uh, uh what's it called? God, I blanked on the word. Point? Point. There we there go. We go. <laughs> professional, don't worry. Remember that part when I said about limited brain cells? <laughs> I'll be honest, until right now, I didn't know Ludicolo had a fake out, so that's just mildly terrifying. Yeah, uh, so the team has three fake out users. And all three are really good fake out users. Yeah. Like, Mega Lop can hit any any mom for fake out unless they got inner focus. Yep, uh, inner focus. Uh, it's the only way that uh, Mega Lop and is going to stop fake out because of the scrappy. Um, Incineroar. Super reliable fake out user. If you've played VGC for more than like 10 minutes, you know why Incineroar is good. And then Ludicolo is also an extra fake out user that can kind of function in the rain mode or just outside of it. Um, and especially, you know, if you've got, you know, Swift Swim boosted fake out, like you needed another faster fake out than Mega Lopony, you've got it even faster if you need it for some reason. <laughs> exactly. Now you can outspeed Scarf fake outers for whatever reason. Yeah, your opponent brings a Scarf Fake Out Mon for some reason. There you go. <laughs> scarf Ludicolo in Rain with Fake Out. <laughs> Nothing outspeeds you. You always get the first Fake Out. Exactly. Um, But yeah, I generally quite like this team. Obviously, Elephant in a Room, no Trick Room mode. Um, But... Uh, is uh, something that me and Rat kind of discussed about. Um, we, unlike Canada, are actually not valuing a Trick Room mode as something that is necessary. What we're looking for is well-rounded uh, teams, um, well-rounded teams with uh, good options. Or this is what I'm looking for. I can't speak for Rat, but we know we discussed not having Trick Room uh, as being necessary because this is Rat we're talking about. If you've seen any of his previous seasons, you know that he doesn't draft Trick Room and still makes playoffs somehow. Not a conscious choice, I just forget it as an option. <laughs> I somehow think that's worse. <laughs> um, but the team does have slower pieces. Uh, you've got the Drillican, which actually does pretty reasonable damage in Truck Room. Machoke, um, which probably doesn't run around your guts too much because of more focusing on Eviolite, but the dynamic punches are going to be annoying. <laughs> I also like that Drodagon can just fire off glares whenever it needs to. Yeah, it's a nice bit of extra speed control. Uh, there's a ton of Pokemon that are going to get Icy Wind. You know, you've got your Ludicolo, your Pelipper. Uh, I believe uh, Latios as well also gets Icy Wind. Uh, so you've got a ton of Pokemon that can, you know, speed control. Um, so speed control is good. Uh, and like I say, you've got the slower pieces. Um, and some and Pokemon that would appreciate the Tailwind, like the Sylveon. Uh, Sylveon with Tailwind is really nice. And with a lot of kind of options to spread damage around um with like i believe a seismic gets money water i'd be shocked if it didn't uh but you'll yeah you know, sure but like combine that with sylveon's pixel like hyper voice uh or just like good damage from the rest of the team because the team team does a lot of damage um there's no there's not a lot of i would call dedicated support pokemon but in a, in a way, that's not necessarily a bad thing because every Pokemon on this team just does good damage. Right. Uh, this is a very aggressive team. Uh, definitely needs to play in that manner, I would say, for the most part, uh, relying on that aggressive nature. Um, but in a way, that's kind of just how Rangers tends to operate anyway, so... <laughs> yeah. 
One thing I did notice about the team as well is it's pretty weak to fairies with its only resist being Clink Clank. And that thing does not have any reliable recovery, unfortunately. Yeah. I think fairies may be an issue. Um, flying's, I think, could. I mean, what? It's three flying's and then the one resisting Clink Clank. So that could be an issue. Maybe an electric type would help out there um, in some capacity. Um, but to be fair as well, um, you've got the... Uh, what am I trying to say? My brain just stopped working. Brain cells, they're limited here, people. <laughs> um, like, you've, you've already got options, and, like, a ton of your Pokemon are going to get, like, coverage to hit flying types. Like, all of the water types are going to get ice moves. So, I don't think it's too bad. The types generally look fine. Uh, like I say, I think an electric type would help its team uh, nicely. You know, you can spam funders with something. Um, yeah. And I know the team was also leaning towards the special side with the rain mode. Uh, so they kind of made sure to pick up some physical attackers. And once Seismic Toad can go physical, it can also go special. So picking up some physical attackers like the Dridigan, the Kling Clang, which um, can reverse Trick Room, um, but not necessarily be a great Trick Room setter. Um... For me, I think I was going to bring it up uh, before, but uh, if I'm going to look at a team that doesn't have a Trick Room mode, I'm going to look at least to see how they can stop Trick Room from going up. Because especially a fast, aggressive team like this one, while well, they've got some slower pieces like the Sylveon and the Incineroar, the Drogon, the Machoke, they've got some slower pieces that can work in Trick Room. Um, I think they need ways to stop Trick Room. And I'm seeing three fake outers. <laughs> And that's not bad. Yeah, three fake outers, it's going to be a little difficult to set up Trick Room. Yeah, uh, and something else I'm looking at is Taunt, which Incineroar also gets, which is quite nice. Uh, no Imprison Trick Room, which is kind of the third and final thing I will be considering. Uh, I'll be look I'm looking for mainly multiple fake out Pokemon, uh, multiple uh, Taunt users, um, just to double taunt something, just in case it's got a Mental Herb, or you can stop, or you, or you can like not get faked out Taunted, stuff like that. And then Prison Trick Room um, as a generally reliable way to stop it. So. Um, I generally quite like this team. Um, your thoughts? Honestly, I really am liking it. It's got a really good amount of power. It's got a relatively alright time stopping Trick Room from even going off. And like Incineroar, like that's like I said earlier, this thing is basically the mascot of VGC. It, it really does a fantastic job of tying everything together, in my opinion. Yeah, it's it's also nice because it's it, the team, a rain team. You wouldn't think to really be able to utilize a fire type well, but Incineroar just does it so well that it just doesn't matter. Like it literally just doesn't matter. Incineroar is that good that it's like, oh cool, I'm on a rain team where I'm extra weak to water. Doesn't matter. I'm just Incineroar. Exactly. So. Um, yeah, I generally quite like this team. I think I'm gonna... How would you feel about a B tier? I was gonna suggest the same thing. Yep. So we're gonna put the Ampharos in the B tier. A uh, couple of them don't uh, have logos on the uh, on the tier list here. Um, just because uh, they don't actually have logos made. A couple of them are new coaches, and uh, we'll, we'll get to Ludwig in a little bit, so... <laughs> <laughs> so, um... Yeah, so next up, we have the Chelsea Charger Bugs, uh, coached by Afroman. Um, and their team consists of Regieleki, Darkrai, Mega Blastoise, Meowstic, Mamoswine, Corviknight, Tapu Bulu, Toracat, and Charger Bug. So, uh, firstly, I want to address the elephant in the, in the room, and it's not Mamoswine. <laughs> it's Meowstic and Darkrai. Yeah. I I'm not... I'm not looking forward to fighting Gravity Dark Void. So, um, the statistic comes out that, uh, so Meowstic, uh, for those who don't know, gets pranks to Gravity, uh, which will increase the accuracy of Dark Void from 50% to 83.5%. So, you have a base, what is it, double checking, 125, yeah, 125 speed Pokemon with a move that can put both Pokemon to sleep. So, balance. yeah, fair and balanced, um, which, um, Incidental Synergy did not even think about until now, 
you would think, okay, there's plenty of ways to stop being put to sleep, you know, you could have safeguard or whatever, but a key one would be, uh, you know, terrain. So terrains are good ways to stop put being put to sleep because, you know, you've got your electric terrain to just stop sleep altogether, a misty terrain. And then there's a Tapu Bulu as well. <laughs> yeah, offering terrain control so you can't just, oh yeah, I have like, for example, Feeny, I'm just gonna not sleep. Nah, I think you should just go in outside and touch some grass. <laughs> Literally touch grass. <laughs> um, this team's definitely at its top end. I'm gonna say definitely on the top end side. Yeah. Um, but uh, in my opinion, the top end works really well. And I'm just gonna say, kind of, I don't know what you were saying when you said this team doesn't do anything. Cause holy cow, does this team do something? Holy cow, does this team do something? The one thing I would love for this team is like redirection of any form to let uh to help. Um, what's it called? Blastoise set up shell smashes. Yeah, I think that would uh, help a lot. Um, so, this team, in my opinion, has two very key things going for it. We kind of discussed the first one with the Dark right? Meowstic. Uh, Meowstic being the premier support Pokemon for this team. Um, giving uh, uh, this team, obviously, the gravity is really cute. And obviously, it's going to win some games on its own just because it can. But also fake out screens for, uh, for some of these Pokemon is going to be super, super nice. Um, but it's also kind of done something that I have been trying to make at least work in singles for so long. Um, it's definitely displayed it through to here. But I think it still works incredibly well. And that is giving Regieleki the most support it can possibly get to function as well as it can. You've got an incredibly good water type in Mega Blastoise. Uh, an incredibly good ice type in Mamoswine. And an incredibly good... Uh, grass type in Tapu Bulu. Well, incredibly good in relative terms, but at least powerful. Yeah. Um, oh, weakened those earthquakes is gonna be so nice for it. Yeah, you got weakened earthquakes, and you've just got three incredibly powerful Pokemon. Uh, the team does have redirection. Um, it's just it doesn't have redirection for the uh for the Blastoise itself. It's just the Blastoise oh, gets right. redirection. Forgot about that, honestly. Yeah. So. Is it not? Why does it say on here that Blastoise doesn't get follow me, even though it does get follow me? That is strange. Uh, let me just double... Because yeah, uh, regular Blastoise gets follow me, so there's no reason why uh, Mega Blastoise shouldn't be able to. Uh, so yeah, regular... I'm just look, can you just show down on another type? Yep, follow me is fine on regular Blastoise. Let's have a look at Mega Blastoise. Yep, it's absolutely fine. So yeah, it's just mistaken on the on the bull hog dog here. Uh, but uh, Mega Blastoise does get follow me. Um, so that is the redirection for the team, which is nice. It it is nice to have a redirection somewhere. Obviously, setting up for the Blastoise would be nice, but you've also got things like Nasty Plot Darkrai. Yeah, that thing is genuinely terrifying. This is why I, I am asking kind of, you said this team doesn't do anything, but you've got Regieleki who hits like a truck. You've got Darkrai who hits like a truck. I don't know if you've seen Darkrai stats and coverage, but holy hell, holy hell does this thing hit like a truck. You've got Mega Literally Blastoise. Into it. Uh, you've got Mega Blastoise that hits like a truck. Mamoswine that hits like a truck. Type of Bulu that hits like a truck and also sets up the grassy terrain for the Mega Blastoise's terrain. Pulse for 150 power grass type moves. This team has damage for days. Indeed it does, and it even has like a way to com like not completely stop Trick Room, but Meowstic can do a pretty good job with its imprisons, its fake out. Yeah, you got multiple fake out users in the Mega Blastoise, the Meowstic, and the Toracat. Again, that's three fake out users. Uh, you got taunt options. I, th I'm not sure exactly what tech gets taunt, but I'm like ninety percent sure like at least Bulu gets taunt. Bulu, Corviknight, Darkrai, Toracat. That's four taunt users, and you got imprison Trick Room. And while you may say, you know, Meowstic's not the most reliable one because it's not bulky, um, if you pair it with Mega Blastoise, who can go follow me, then you're kind of working with something. And something I like to talk about is uh, specific situations, and one of those is uh, maybe against this team. The opponent has a faster fake out user and a trick room setter. You leave Mega Blastoise, Meowstic in stat. Mega Blastoise uh, has fake out and follow me. So you can go turn one, fake out into their trick room setter, and they 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 can only fake out either your Blastoise that's trying to follow me, or fake out the imprisoned trick room setter in the meow stick, and then turn two, neither of you have fake out, so you can follow me in imprisoned trick room. So 
So his team can he, he, his team can stop Trick Room actually quite well. Indeed it can. Um, Corviknight, also a nice uh, end game win condition. Uh, the team definitely needed a Steel type. Um, so having Corviknight is just like... Just to wrap things together, nice bulky Pokemon that can just win the game with Iron Defense Body Press. Um, Mega Blastoise can do this as well. It is also a Tailwinder. Uh, it's the only Tailwinder on the team, but you've also got Regieleki Electro Web, which is very difficult to stop. Yeah, there's no stopping that thing. Yeah, and um, this team is fast. Um, in <laughs> Initially, it wanted to be faster. Afro Man wanted to draft Dragapult, and I was like, dude, slow down! <laughs> I know you want speed, but slow down. <laughs> it is genuinely terrifying. <laughs> and Dragapult, I feel, would have been insane on this team because it offers screen support, but I feel like I'm, eh, Miastic already has that. Yeah, um, I was like, slow down. You need some slower Pokemon. You need some bulkier Pokemon. Toracat, obviously, is a great support Pokemon as well. Just offers the inti uh, team Intimidate. It, we've just talked about Incineroar. This is baby Incineroar. Indeed. Um, and the, the mascot pick Charger Bug, which Afro Man has said that he wants to beat me with Charger Bug. <laughs> that would be pretty Charger based. <laughs> I'm going to remove you from this call. <laughs> That's completely fair. Um, but yeah, I genuinely quite like this team. I think it's got a, I think it's got a lot of synergy. The Pokemon don't really get in the way of each other. It's got ways of stopping Trick Room. It's got fast options that are quite aggressive. My real only consideration is... This is something that is going to be a trend, especially when we look at some of the other teams. At least I don't know how you feel about Rat, this Rat. I am not the biggest fan of super top-end teams. Yeah, same here. Because, like, yeah, it's going to pick up a lot of games, but eventually people are going to figure out, okay, they always bring, like, these same six or most of the time. It's going to be pretty easy to adapt to it after a while. Yeah, and that is why I'm not the biggest fan of top-end teams. This one kind of... I mean, it's only 9 Pokemon. It was 9 to 11 Pokemon in the draft itself. Um, and this kind of has, you know, a, a deal where, like, 7 of the Pokemon are quite good. Torcat's like, okay in some matchups. And Charger Bug is going to be brought against me specifically, just so I lose to it. Um, <laughs> but also, it's actually, like, pretty I'm good with... Wind up at, like... If you need help, like, DM me. I really want to see that Winda diss track. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I'm not getting diss tracked, okay? It's not happening. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> um, Fine. I'll do it myself. <laughs> um, Charger Book honestly helps a lot of those great special attacks on the team, like Darkrai, Leki, and Blastoise. So, yeah. Um, I quite like this team. Um... But are you going to see how strong it compares to some of the other teams? I think that's really where it's going to uh, end up. Because it's kind of like just barely on the edge where I'm like, okay, this is it's top end. But it's like, I don't mind it too much. It's like at least seven Pokemon, seven to eight, that I'm like, okay, yeah, most these can come to most weeks and be fine. Yeah. So uh, I'm thinking B as well for this. I agree with that one. Uh, above or below the Amphis? I'm thinking below. I, I can go below, honestly. Yeah. You you can disagree with me, you know. No, no, I agree on this one, though. Okay, fair enough. All right, next up, we have myself. Uh, okay, so... Best team in the league. I set myself this reminder for a reason, Linda. <laughs> so we have my team, which, uh, as of this time, I've actually not made a, uh, a, a, a draft analysis on. Um, So I will be getting around to that. I've actually got a lot of videos to upload just bear with me i've been behind on things just leave me alone this one's going up because i want to get it up but you know just 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 bear with me okay anyway so my team everton espions um i have grimsnarl mega latios rotom wash arcanine tornado spherian escavalier galarian sloking Fwaki, marowak cloak and swirtle so as you, as you are at tell me your initial thoughts Winda, this team is genuinely broken. I have no clue how you got most of this. So you want to know what my initial thought was before I looked at any other team in the league? What? I thought my team was B tier. No! <laughs> I genuinely thought my team was B tier. You're telling me you thought a team with Grimmsnarl, Megalatios, Torn, uh, Rotom Wash, 
and the infamous Bless Cab was B tier. Yeah, I, I did. This is why Kanner told me to not let you gaslight me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the reason why is um, I thought it didn't have overall insane synergies. I thought it had like good solid, it was good solid, it's good solid mons this. This is a good solid mons team that didn't have too many insane synergies. And go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was just gonna say, my dude, this team has so much good synergy. <laughs> I, I I didn't really think so. <laughs> you have so many modes. Like for example, Grim Snarl and Mega Latios pair amazingly. Like a dual screen set into let Latios set up whatever it needs to. We got the Justified set with a uh, Arcan Arcanine and Jacloak. We got the best one pointer in the league by far. Just offers follow me, fake out. I think icy wind as well. Yep. Uh, Squirrel, definitely the wet best one pointer in the league. I can't deny that one. Redirection on, uh, on Squirtle, uh, is actually at one point is disgusting. Um, do you want to know the calc that I ran with this? Absolutely. I'm terrified to hear this. So you know, um, so you know Porygon Z, right? It's a really powerful special attacker. Yeah. Me, let me let me door check the calc. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go to a nice damage calc over here and uh, let's pick up Squirtle. Uh, let's put it at level fifty. Ev nice Eevee light set. Uh, with max HP and max special defense. Uh, I'm gonna give it to Calm, and then we're gonna go in Porygon Z. Uh, a nice standard uh choice spec set. Uh, timid choice specs at level fifty. Um, you know it can, uh, you know uh, it can live Thunderbolt from uh, Specs Porygon Z, right? No. No, you're joking. Let me, let me just, uh, give you a nice copy-paste and, uh, just, uh, put you this. Oh my god. So yeah, that's why Squirtle's really good. Um, it takes hits like a champion. <laughs> And even if it doesn't, you can just give it a Focus Sash. Um, really good Pokemon, I'll admit that. Um, but some of the reasons why I didn't think it was as good was like, I don't really have any good terrain synergy. Like, I've got the Thwacky, sorry Lord Nobody, but you kind of proved yourself to do too well with this thing, and you've proved it's good. I'm sorry I took it from you, but like, it's too good. <laughs> um, like, but I don't have any necessary terrain synergies. I've got a couple of Pokemon weak to ground, like the Arcanine and the, uh, sorry, the Arcanine and the uh, Galarian Slowking. But uh, other than that, like, I don't really have great synergy with it. I love your uh, synergy with uh, Slowking and uh, Escav being able to set up Trick Room and just freely fire off Sludge Waves. Taken from, uh, taken from a connoisseur of someone who loves spamming, uh, spamming Sludge Waves, to be fair. Well, uh, uh, a bit of a spoiler alert, but a uh, bulky steel type next to a poison type is the exact same thought process I have for my team. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I, uh, I, may, I, I, I don't know if I intentionally took inspiration, but uh, it was definitely on my mind. <laughs> Especially because I was looking, I, I, I had uh, regular Sloking last season, and regular Sloking and even Slowbro ended up getting bumped up in points. So I looked at Sloking Gala, which doesn't get oblivious on like the other, uh, on like the regular forms. But it's still really bulky um, and deals good damage. And obviously, you got the Sludge Wave synergy with the Escavalier. You got two fast Tailwind setters, an actual Trick Room mode. Grimmsnarl is disgusting. It's a disgusting Pokemon. There's a reason why I picked it first because I genuinely think it's just super versatile. Um, Absolutely. This thing has speed control, damage reduction, fake out, a really good source of damage. Yeah, um, people kind of forget this one, but just, just you remember that Grimmsnarl has base 120 attack, right? <laughs> I always do forget that, I'll be honest. Yeah, um, and also something I definitely wanted to focus on, which I don't know if I accomplished as well as I wanted to, which is also one of the reasons why I wasn't too sold on the synergy, was a move you didn't mention, and that's Fake Tears. Oh no. So you know Fake Tears plus Mega Latios, right? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> that is one of the main reasons why I want that, that duo. I want a, uh, so for those who don't know, I actually originally wanted uh, Mega uh, uh, Salamence, but I was like, I'm not sure about it because I want, uh, I'm want. i wanting to make sure I have um, 
a Pokemon that can utilize Fake Tears really well. And Mega Salamence can do that, but not always. Mega Latios, on the other hand... <laughs> It's always going to benefit from a fake tears. Yep. What's going to live up like a minus two special defense hit from a Mega Latios? Yeah. Um, combine that, you've also got Written Wash and Tornado Spherian. So... Yeah, Rotom Wash was an excellent pick. Like, I I'm going to like stroke my own ego a little bit. Uh, but like, I had that last season and God, it did wonders. Yeah, we know. We know. <laughs> I don't want to talk about how many times you got powers with that stupid thing. I genuinely don't know how. Uh, whereas I cannot really recreate that because of my ground type being a Marowak, which is a nice, like, slow ground type, but uh, certainly no Garchomp that you had last season. Yeah. Uh, Arcanine, great Pokemon we talked about Justified already. Um, but obviously the Intimidate is really nice, one of the main reasons why I wanted to pick it up. And, uh, correctly, it also has flash fire. Flash fire is really nice. Helps for the Escavalier. Um, Escavalier uh, is one of the few uh, uh, fire weeks on the team that and Flacky. And I think I have done a good job at least covering for that. It was one of my worries with Escavalier, but I also wanted to pick Escavalier, so the the majority of my trick room mode wasn't going to just be weak to ground. Right, right. Um. Another thing about this team that I've uh, come to realize is, so you know, like, it's it's generally quite offensive. There's a lot of really good offensive Pokemon. Yep. Have you ever thought about the lead of Grimmsnarl plus Arcanine? Oh my god, that's so bulky. So you intimidate your opponent, you proceed to set up a screen, you snarl your opponent with Arcanine, and then you start spirit breaking. <laughs> I should have taken the funny dog. So, this team can go slow and bulky as hell. So, if you need bulk, you can go bulk. And this team is naturally quite bulky as well. Like, you can see, like, the stats and, like... Okay, it's not... Okay, it's dropped down a bit because there's a couple EVI Pokemon. But generally, the team is pretty bulky. And can really utilize those screens well. Actually, there's three, like, not fully evolved Pokemon on this team. I just realized. Um... I forgot. I always forget Dracloak is a mon, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> Dracloak's there to beat up the Arcanine if it's if it's worth it. I had two points left over and after I ended up picking the Marowak because I needed a ground type on the team. Um which can do damage in Trick Room, um, as an alternative Trick Room sweeper. You know, there's a couple of Pokemon here that can function in Trick Room and have a Trick Room mode, which is, you know, not necessary, but not something I'm exactly gonna knock points for. It's an extra way to play the team, which is what I'm more so looking at it's different ways to play the team so right. see, personally what i look for in a good team is options and window you have all of them <laughs> there's a lot That's of options the easiest s team i've seen so far yeah i i initially didn't think it but after kana said it which while well, kana and i have differing opinions on what a good draft needs but also, you've said it, and thinking about it more, I've at least got the confidence of multiple people saying that this is an S team. I'll put in an S. Initially, I thought it was a B team, but I'll put in an S. I hate putting myself in S because this is what this like. This isn't the first time I've had to put myself in S and put myself as like contentiously the best team in the league. Uh, look back to season three, for example. But um, yeah. Uh -oh. There's an easy solution. Just stop drafting broken teams. I could do that. It's hard. I like drafting teams that are good. That's fair, honestly. Um, so... Yeah, um... So... Me and S, again, it's a, it's a thing. Um, but yeah, so let's get into our next team, which I believe is actually the Grafton Grambles, coached by Kana. So... Uh, the can man himself. Yep, the owner. Um, so, should mention, up until this point, I've actually helped with every team. Uh, I helped with the Ampharoses, uh, the Amphis even, and the uh, Charger Bugs, because uh, they're friends of mine that's a league and I haven't actually played Draft before. They've just played VGC. Funnily enough, I helped with my own team. Uh, <laughs> funnily enough, you know, I actually made my own team. What a concept. Um, I also helped with uh, this one, with Canners. Um... Uh, they have Mega Metagross, Tapu Fini, Gastrodon, Alola Marowak, Infernape, Galarian Articuno, Al uh, Alolan Exeggutor, Sceptile, Avalok, and Furret. 
So initial thoughts? So like, I want to start with the positives. Mega Metagross is an insanely strong mon, and paired with Tapu Fini, it can't get paralyzed. It can't get burned. It can't fall asleep. It's free to do whatever it wishes to do. It's really scary. That duo in particular is honestly terrifying. Um, mm -hmm. It's also quite versatile as well, and this team is generally quite versatile. There's a lot of options. You've got good TR modes. You've got good TR setters. Um, I'll call to attention one Pokemon that I massively suggested, which was Galarian Articuno. Honestly, I think this Pokemon is insane in draft because it gets both Tailwind and Trick Room and can imprison it and gets dual screens and does pretty reasonable damage as well. It's a really, really solid Pokemon. This thing is insanely versatile, and for it, honestly, really good pick in my opinion. It's got Follow Me, it's a good support mon. Yeah. And, like, it's got a really solid Trick Room mode as well. Yeah, uh, you got some really good offense in Trick Room. Alolan Marowak does insanely good damage. Alolan Executor can set the Trick Room itself and deal really good damage. It got base 125 attack, and Frisk is a broken ability, as well as, you know, Fur also having Frisk. You got two Frisk users, kind of just being really frisky, apparently. Um, but you've got lots of options. You've also got the Avalug as well, um, which. The ice Table, let's go. Ice Table! Uh, which can, there's actually a lot of Pokemon because we're playing Nat Dex and, uh, Nat Dex means Pokemon from, uh, that come from previous generations are allowed to get moves from those generations. Um, so, besides Jirachi getting Follow Me, we banned that one because, no. <laughs> it's not, it's not happening. Um, but... enough, it didn't get drafted. It did not. Uh, if it got Follow Me, it would have been my pick for round one. <laughs> um... But because a ton of Pokemon actually gets Swagger, you can actually use the own tempo on the Avalor quite easily. So, uh, notably, uh, it gets own tempo, uh, sorry, it gets Swagger. Uh, you can Swagger it very easily, both in the in the Misty Terrain um, or outside of it because of own tempo and boosts its attack. And with so many Pokemon getting Swagger, it's pretty easy to get the Avalor set up. Um, also gets Iron Defense Body Press as well as Recover, so it can be a pretty good late game con uh, win condition. You also have the option of swaggering your own Mega Metagross. Yep, in the uh, in the terrain as well, absolutely. So you've got a lot of options for this team. Indeed. But now let's come to the downside and where I think I missed when I helped out with this team. Do you know how? Can you see um, how many Pokemon sh uh, have uh, you have have two or, or more of the same type on this team? Yeah, it doubles up a lot on the same type. That is four. Double water, double, double fire, and double grass. And double psychic. And double psychic. I think double grass isn't as big of an issue because the set tile on bird and stuff is probably not going to be coming into the same game as Alolan Exeggutor. Very different yeah. Pokemon. But Mega Metagross and Galarian Articuno are supporting an offensive Pokemon that can very easily come to games. Tapu Fini and Gashadon can conflict with each other in some situations. You can obviously surf with your Tapu Fini to boost with a Storm Drain. That's an option, but Gastrodon can't yawn or go for Skull Burns in the Misty Terrain that the Tapu Fini is going to be setting up. And then you've got two very offensive Fire types, one fast with Fake Out in Infernape, and one really slow in Alolan Marowak. But they're still both offensive Fire types that aren't exactly the bulkiest at times. Oh, especially in Infernape, yeah. but uh, Alolan Marowak on the special side doesn't really take hits very well at all. So... While the types are the type match uh, chart um, generally doesn't look as bad as it could be. Um, mine actually was roughly similar. Um, the lack of coverage on different types uh, is an issue in my opinion, and I I may spoil some stuff here, but uh, let me go to the actual page because they may have made changes that I wasn't aware of. So they did, but I don't know if it was in Time of Grace. I don't think it was. I don't think it was. Um, so I'll have to actually ask Kara about that because on the site it actually says they have Vicar Vault. Um, but I don't believe that was made in Time of Grace, so I will not be considering that. But I was going to say they do would like an Electro type, and Vicavolt would be a good one for this uh, team. Um, but yeah, um, just because of the double ups on types and some uh, actual anti synergy on the team, um, you know, you've got Pokemon that do want to set uh, use um, 
where are they? Where are they? The Stannises. Like you've got, you know, you got a couple of Willow Whispers. You got, uh, you got the Alolan Executor with the Sleep Powder, uh, and you know, dashed on with the Yons. There's some anti synergy at times um, with Tappy Finney, which is something that can happen uh, just with Finney. Uh, it means you kind of have to play around Finney a bit more. Your opponent does as well, unless they've got you know opposing terrain. But I think the team has some general anti synergies which uh and just a lot of pokemon of the same type which uh even if i i, I don't know what you went for what went for it in the in the in the week one change um what am i missing oh is it just added i think it's just oh i think it is actually just on the team and i missed it i think vikavolt is actually just on the team and i just didn't put it on <laughs> Okay. I'm checking the uh, draft channel, and uh, he drafted it like right um, before his Sceptile, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so I just missed it like an idiot. So the team does actually have an electric type, and I'm just an idiot. Um, which, um, you know, nothing new there. Let me just put that on, because uh, then it might uh, be a bit more actual representative. Um but yeah. Trained professionals. Uh yeah, very clearly. Uh but even still it doesn't really change the type matchups. There's still like one flying resist in the Mega Metagross, uh two rock resists between the Gastron, the Mega Metagross, and a four weeks to it. Um no real convincing answer to ghost types other than redirecting them into Furret, and not the best answers into dark types either. Uh you've pretty much just got the Finny offensively. Um So um, I am personally not as big of a fan of this team as I think Kana was. Kana actually put himself in S, which I understand, you know, you like your own team, um, absolutely. But, uh, for me personally, I don't like this one nearly as much. Yeah, that's fair, honestly. Personally, though, I'd still put it, like, somewhere in A. Because it does have a lot of options that I really like. I have a lot of options that uh, I think are very good, but I do... I think this is one of the most polarizing in terms of it's got a lot of options and really well rounded but also has a lot of things that i don't like about it um i might be also quite critical because this is kana um kana is also a very a good vgc player so i know they can probably make this work just fine but uh i also know their ability to draft is very good so this might be one of the weaker teams that they've made which also feels bad because i did help in this a little bit um and i think i did miss uh, I think I missed some of the possibilities of just how many double ups on types there were. Um, and that is partially my fault. But uh, at the same time, um, I th if you want to put it A, I would say probably going to be the lowest in A. Uh, I would have probably put it in B personally. You want to compromise and settle for like high B? High B, I think, is fine. We've currently got everything in B except for me, so we're probably going to have to change some things around. Um, so, uh, we'll see about the Ampharos and the Charger Bugs in a little bit. Uh, but for now, because I personally actually think the, at least the Ampharos are better than the Grambles. Which sounds crazy, but like, I actually value their synergistic team more. Right, 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 right. So... We'll see about that. We might come to we might come to a different conclusion uh, later on because we still have what six teams to look at. So indeed, we're like less than halfway in. And it has been I accidentally opened something that I didn't mean to open. We are f forty five minutes in. This, 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 this is this is this is where Canada got to. This how long Canada's video was, and we're only four teams in. So, but we're coming up onto one that's uh, familiar to you, maybe. It's the Mexico Mimikyu's, coached by Fat Rat. Oh, this is the worst in the league. Oh, He's shut your mouth. <laughs> so, uh, I'll I'll spiel off for a little bit because uh, I'll I'll give my initial thoughts instead because this is this is Rat's team. Uh, with Mega Gengar, Celesteela, Raichu, Conkelder, Milotic, Reuniclus, Appleton, Kangaskhan, Alolan Muk, and Togepi. I'm not missing anything this time, right? Please tell me I'm not missing anything. And that I'm... is everything. That is everything. Okay. So, initial thoughts. This team's actually insane. I love this team. I genuinely love this team. Um, I think the, the the top three picks are 
insanely synergistic. Mega Gengar, Celesteela, Raichu. You got the Sludge Wave with the Mega Gengar into the Celesteela. Again, we kind of talked about it before on my end. You know, we've got the... I have the Sloking Gallery and the Escavalier. Whereas they've got Mega Gengar. Honestly, one of the rats, like... Probably favourite Pokemon to use uh, after Season 1. Absolutely. And just, yeah. Uh, Raichu... Giving the Lightning Rod support to the Celesteela is also being able to proc its weakness quality with potential Discharge slash Fault Switch on it. Uh, Raichu actually gets Endeavor, which makes it much more terrifying. Fast Fake Out user, great Pokemon, especially with Mega Gengar as well. You know, I believe it gets Electro Web, so you got that Speed Control. Rat actually drafted Trick Room! Well done, Rat! Let's go! <laughs> um, first time in UBL history. Literally first time in UBL history. More Mega Gengar can set up the Trick Room and also imprison Trick Room maybe pretty well. Um, Reuniclus... Is a very solid Trick Room set and also deals a lot of damage in Trick Room. Combine that with Conkelda and even Appleton and a little Muck, and you've got a lot of Pokemon that will really want to work well in Trick Room. Uh, Milotic, really nice bulky water type. Don't know if it's the best for this team personally. Uh, I just I like Milotic a lot as a Pokemon um, and in competitive as well with the competitive ability. But there's not as many physical attackers that need to be dissuaded, intimidate, uh, dissuading the intimidate. It's mainly the Conkelda and the Alolan Muck because uh, Kan can run in a focus and scrappy to not care about the uh the intimidate uh togepi great redirector for the reuniclus just make sure you get that uh redirection up two fake out users in the kangaskhan uh Mukalola, i think is actually a great pokemon uh even with the berry nerfs uh gluttony uh, with a low muck is really really nice just means you have so much health to work with and deal a really good amount of damage um appleton literally got doubled in price because of me last season <laughs> Um, because it's such a versatile offensive Pokemon that can also just win the game with body presses and iron defenses and leech seeds and all that good stuff. Uh, I genuinely love this team. Thank you. So, uh, your point about Milotic, I completely agree. This thing was supposed to be a Suicune, but it got taken round one. <laughs> yeah. I could see that, because the team... One of the main issues with it is a lack of Tailwind. Yeah, like the whole time I was trying to like find a different water type that can set Tailwind, but they're all water flying. Yeah. And I don't want to like double up on the flying types. Yeah. Um, I don't think it would have been too bad because you do have the Raichu, um, which can... Yeah, but Raichu can only do so much. Yeah, Raichu can only do so much, and I, I think that's fair. Um, but I think the lack of Tailwind is honestly the only thing I don't like about this team. Genuinely, the only thing I don't buy. Is there, a, is there a repeat type? I cannot see a single repeat. Oh, no, sorry. Alolan nice. Muk. Uh, Alolan Muk and Mega Gengar. That is your only repeat typing, and the only weakness they share is ground. Which the, I think is ground is the main weakness of the team, I believe. Yes, but it's the only red. It's the only red. And you've so, still got Celesteela as well. When planning, I completely forgot Alolan Muk was a poison type. I just grabbed it because it was like a bulky, nice dark type that I felt synergized well with the team. Oh, you forgot it was a poison type. You know, I originally had a plan for Grace that made my team significantly worse, like in like terms of options. But like, I'm so glad I didn't go through with it. I I'm also glad. Just look at these. You definitely lean towards on the slower side, but a lot of these Pokemon are really bulky as well. Um. Yeah. So, um, I just generally like this team. Um, I think it's got a lot of good options. Uh, it's got a lot of good offense. Uh, supporting options I think are pretty solid as well. Celesteel is a scary Pokemon, even without Max, and like you can still weakness policy it and still do really good damage. Um, and it still has Meteor Beam. Still has Power of Meteor Beam. Still can just go offensive physical, or you can just play it to a late King Win condition with Leech Seed. So many options, um, such a versatile, versatile Pokemon, and this team just has so many ways it can play. I think literally the only thing holding it back is Tailwind. Uh, Tailwind would help this team massively because you've kind of only got two really fast Pokemon, um, and having to rely on like Mega Gengar Icy Wind while good isn't something you always want to be doing with Mega Gengar. Yeah. Like, I, there's always the option of nuzzling my opponents, but, like, that can only do so much. Yeah, you, you can only do so much. Um, nuzzle is still really good, don't get me wrong. Um, but the speed control, I'd say, is limited and will probably want to play more, actually, on the slow side. Which, honestly, right, I'm going to be surprised if you can do, because I've never seen you do it in your life. 
Yeah, it's gonna be weird. I've never run Trick Room once in UBL history. Yeah. Um. So it's gonna be interesting to see, but the options for slow mode is absolutely there. Um. This is an at least an A tier team pushing S. It's culture to see. Oh, shut your mouth. If you, if, 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 if you had notes on uh, not being gaslit by me to put uh, put my team in, like, B, you're not having your team in C. Um, but I can see uh, A, it's going in A, there's a good chance it goes in S. And I really like the fact that I picked up two redirectors, because usually I only take the one. Wait, who's the other redirector? Oh, right, you guys follow me. No, it does not! No! <laughs> That's gross! <laughs> That's so... It doesn't say it on the dot, but... but. I only learned that after drafting it. Oh... Yeah, I'm, ju I'm just going to... Uh, uh, the Going to showdown and checking. Uh, just because uh, it doesn't show everything on the dock here, but... Uh, yep, it gets follow me. Oh my goodness. Follow me, lightning rod. Oh dear. We'll sell a steel. Oh... Oh no. Right, why have yes. you done this to us all? <laughs> yeah. Right, why do you build, build such good teams? Stop building such good teams. We wouldn't have to put you so high on the on the power rankings if you didn't build good teams. Sound familiar? <laughs> no, not at all, but I feel like this is the first time that's ever been said in UBL history. <sighs> but yeah, I can see this. This is pushing us easily, and if there's nothing else contesting us, because we're going to do the same thing that Canada did, um, where we're going to have two in S, three in A, three in B, and two in C. The same, we already have three in B. There's going to be some ships going around, but we'll have to see. So, um, but I can easily see this going in S. So, next up, uh, this is the Mogul Mercenaries, which is why we have a picture of Ludwig on the dock, uh, because. That's that's the best thing I could come up with when making this tier list. All right, suit me. Uh, so their team consists of Mega Salamence, Amoongus, Zerora, uh, Bronzong, Confei, Dormanitan, Rhyperia, Golduck, Apom, and Corvusquire. I'm not gonna lie, like I said, Amoongus, and then like my brain, I swear, just shut down. <laughs> <laughs> um. So uh, initial thoughts. First of all, I'd like to say, boys, this team has absolutely insane power with Mega Ments, Zera Aura, the good old fashioned Darm, and Rhyperior. All of those are incredible um, uh, offensive threats. They really are. Uh, Mega Ments are, I would argue, the best Mega, um, to be honest. Uh, better than Mega Kangaskhan. That's going to be controversial, um, but I think uh, it's just so, so versatile in offense and support that just especially with intimidate before mega as well you can play in so many different ways and it's just not even funny um zero believe actually gets speed control in electroweb at base 142 yeah, speed um so you have got that going for you it's kind of like you know just having like a baby aleki that's also just immune to electric type moves um so you've got that going for you uh, you've got the two Tailwind setters in Mega Salamence and Confei. You've got the two Trick Room setters in Bronzong and Confei. Um, but this is going to be where we begin a certain trend. And that trend is going to be in the top end of the draft. And that is... Uh, this team is quite top heavy. Yeah. And there's one Pokemon in particular that I don't quite understand and it's in that top end and it's why i'm kind of leaning towards not liking this team nearly as much and that is actually confey um so the reason for that is i think there is a pokemon on this team that does everything confey wants to do better um it can tailwind uh oh, okay. so, so you got t if you want to tailwind you got mega salamence if you want to trick room you got Bronzong, and if you want a weakness policy or a period, yeah, you've also got the Bronzong, as well as a Moongus. So I'm not sure what the role of Compe is on the team other than just being a fairy type, and I think you could probably just get a better, a, a different fairy type for around that price range that doesn't rely on, you know, the utility that uh, Compe normally offers. 
So I agree with that, but Comfy does an amazing job of healing with its floral healing. And just a lot of this team does really like to have that extra bulk. Like for example, Rhyperior. Just what it could love to just be back at full after a while. Yeah, I think that's fair. Um I also think a lot of the team is quite uh homogenizing. Um where it's either very fast or very slow. Yeah. Um, you kind of got the main seven Pokemon that you're going to be bringing, uh, going down to the Golduck, which, um, we do have three Weber teams, so you get a five-point Pokemon, and that's good into a third of the games you're going to be playing. I honestly think that's perfectly fine, um, but you're not going to bring it to every game. And then you got Apom, which is Fake Out, and that's about it. And then Corusquire, which is a mediocre Tailwind setter, which you've already got Mega Salamence that could set Tailwind quite easily. I mean, if you wanted, like, a small, cheap Tailwinder, you probably could have taken, like, Fletchling, and it would have been just as good as Corvusquire, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I think I'd agree with that. Um, it also would offer different utility uh, to Mega Salmons, because then you'd have at least the Gale Wings. Although, I'm not sure how much Fletchling was, to be fair. I can check that real quickly. That is the wrong button. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think there's a lot of fast stuff, whereas, like, if you're going for a fast mode, you bring Mega Salamence, you bring Zerorora, you bring Domanitan, and you bring one more, maybe the Confei, maybe the Amoongus, uh, just because Amoongus can kind of work in both. Um, but if you're going for the slow mode, you're going for Amoongus plus Bronzong, plus Rhyperia, and then maybe the Confei. Um, Pokemon can't really mix and match, really, and saying there's only seven Pokemon that I can realistically see brought, it's very clear on what you're going to be expecting and how a lot of them are going to be played. Oh god, I think I might be blind. I can't find it. <sighs> Fine, I'll find it. I think we might have just forgotten it. Did we just not put it on? Um, If we did put it on, it probably would have been a one-pointer. Yeah, because yeah. I can't see it either. So don't worry, you're not the only one that's blind. Uh, because I control left it. So, um, so if it just wasn't on there, then you know, that just like you can just request it, and it'll be one point most likely, one maybe two. But that means it's still affordable for the team by just dropping a bomb. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I'm. Yeah, just, uh, I, if it's two points, then drop Courtois and Apom. Because uh, both of those were one-pointers. Um, so yeah, personally, like while I respect the power of this team, I think it's very clear what the Pokemon are going to be coming. Uh, and while uh, like it's, you know, like, that can be fine, I think because it's clear on what the Pokemon are coming and which ones are going to be coming to most situations. Like, if you see certain leads, you know it, you can pretty much guarantee the two Pokemon in the back. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of this team. Yeah, in all honesty, me neither. Like, I said it before, and I'll say it again, the thing I value most in a team is variability and versatility. And, like, you take a look at any of these mods, and you already know what they want to do. Yeah. Silence wants to be fast and offensive, maybe set up Tailwind. Uh, Amoongus wants to be bulky and slow and annoying. Zeroar wants to be fast and maybe provide speed control and do good damage. Bronzong, Trick Room support. Confei does everything Confei does. Heals the team, Tailwind, Trick Room, all that good stuff. Dom hits things really hard. Rhyperia hits things really hard. Golok, useful for the against the weather matchups. And Apom and uh, Corvus Wire are there, uh, to be quite honest. So, um, and outside of the Apom, the team doesn't have Fake Out, uh, which is something I definitely uh, value. Zerora. Oh, Zero or I get sake fake out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never mind. That's a good fake out. Um, so, you know, I think that... And it also gets a lot of taunts. So it can, it can deny Trick Room, but it also wants to play in Trick Room a lot. So, um, yeah. this is going to be one of those where we have differing opinions. Because while it's got a great Trick Room mode, that's one of its two game plans of the entire of the entire team. And the other one is go fast with Salamence slash Zero uh, and Dom. And that's the game plan. So... For me, I want to put this in C. 
Okay, thank God. I was doing C as well. Um. So I'm gonna put this in C. Uh, so next up we have the Salty Swampert and Lord Noble. I don't think I said that the Mogul moves are coached by Vitrena. Um, if I didn't, I do apologize. But this is the, uh, the Salty Swampert and the uh, Salty Swampert and Lord Nobody. Uh, last season's runner-up, actually. So um, they're, they're, they're a very good player. And their team consists of Mega Morwile, Rillaboom, Marshadow, Thunderous Incarnate, Blastoise, Dustnor, Tyrantrum, or Beetle, Kecleon, Absol, and Camerupt. Initial thoughts? My dude Thwacky from last season had a whole training arc. <laughs> again, I'll apologize to Lord Nobody. They wanted Thwacky again, and I was like, nah, you've proven Thwacky's too good, I want Thwacky. <laughs> so instead he just got he just buffed up his old monkey. Yep. Are, are we allowing steroids? I, I feel like steroids are a bit illegal. Um, you know what they say: if you don't get caught, it's not a problem. Don't, don't, exactly don't, 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 don't quote me on that. Just don't, don't, don't take, don't take that out of context. <laughs> to the Discord, I go. <laughs> no. Uh. So, um, you remember what I said about top end? Yep. Yeah, that's where my issue lies. It is incredibly top end. Incredibly so, and also a lot of even the lower point Pokemon kind of function and do similar things, like Dusnor and or Beetle. Yeah, I really don't get why both of them. You only really need the one. Yeah, Kecleon a different Trick Room setter, but also could fake out and uh, function with priority, which I don't think is too bad. But I don't think Dustnor and Orbital is necessary, especially because both also have Frisk. Yeah. So, you know, that's the thing. Um, but the top end, don't get me wrong, top end's insane. Top end's really, really good. It really is. Um, while there's no actual Tailwind setter, you can mitigate that with Thunderous uh, Prankster uh, Thunder Waves uh, and Rillaboom Grassy Glides quite easily. Um, but other than that, there's no Tailwind. So yeah, this thing's gonna really struggle keeping up with like speed and well against other teams that do have tailwind and trick room. Yeah. Um And even then I think some teams are gonna very much have slower trick room modes. Um like you got the you the slowest Pokemon on the team is like type type between Kecleon and Camerupt, and Kecleon actually tends to use a lot of its priority anyway. But there's a lot of teams that can have Pokemon that are slower than the main Trick Room Sweeper of Mega Mawile. And while Mega Mawile also just can be used outside of Trick Room quite nicely, it functions best in Trick Room, and while there's, you know, options to set it up, I think if this team doesn't get speed control, it's going to have a really tough time. Indeed. One thing I do really like about this team is the synergy between Thunderous and Mega Maw. Because Thunderous with Defiant can really uh, just disincentivize a lot of Intimidators that want to mess up Mega Maw. Yeah, uh, that and even Rillaboom uh, and Marshadow, which uh, we haven't really touched on. Marshadow is a Pokemon that I have never actually seen uh, be used in a league, mostly because it's uh, usually not allowed. Uh, ghost Fighting is a terrifyingly good uh, offensive stab uh, combination, which no Pokemon in the game can resist. Ghost normal, but Hisui and Zoroark. Yeah, we do we do not have a Hisui and Zoro uh, Zoro uh, Zoroark, so there is nothing. Uh, so other other than that, which you know maybe we'll get in Gen Nine, um, as an actual Pokemon that is allowed to be used. Um, but other than that, nothing can resist its dual stab. Um, it is an incredibly scary Pokemon. Um. And combine that with, you know, the Defiant Thunderous or even just Pranks to Thunder Wave. It's already the fastest Pokemon on the team, the Marshadow, at base 125 speed, which is very, very fast. Uh, but after that and the Thunderous, the, team, the, the speeds just drop. Speeds just drop down. So. Indeed they do. Um, There's a very large gap. Yeah. Um, And, you know, it got drops down to Orbital, which when are you running speed on? So. Never. Um... The team 
but almost as a result viewers forced into pranks to fund the wave a lot more as a form of speed control if it doesn't want to force itself to go into trick room and while you've got blastoise to follow me to set up the trick room you know fairly reliably um if teams are ready for it then and then good at denying the speed control in any way this team's going to struggle um i think some other teams that we've seen uh this team has some bulk but it's also you got five really top end mo pokemon that are going to be coming to most games if not all and that's an issue yeah very top heavy um tyrantrum i think is solid solid like a rock um you can boot me from the call at your earliest convenience. Uh, <laughs> That's not even... I can't even blame you for that one. That's better than, like, half the jokes I've said today. <laughs> um, I think it's a fine Pokemon. It can work uh, in, like, faster modes because of the Dragon Dance and, uh, you know, options to fund away things slower than it. Um, but also can work in Trick Room. It's a little bit on the slower side. It's, like, 71 speed. It's, just, like, on that awkward number. Um, I'll be honest, I do not see a single purpose for Absalom Camerupt. Yeah, Absol being there just confuses me a lot. Maybe I think it might just be there because it's a dark type. Yeah, but it's also not very Almost good like dark type. It's not great. Um, and then camera up type, no idea. Like camera up's just not very good. Yeah, any water move or ground move will just say no to it. Yeah, uh, anything super effective against it will just nuke it. Um, so again. This is one where I think I am less convinced on it being uh, consistent, I think is uh, the best way to put it. A lot of Pokemon quite, can be quite versatile. You've got Thunder, which is quite versatile. Blastoise, which is quite versatile. But I think we'll, in this team, more lean into the supporting role. Um, Rillaboom, insanely versatile. Uh, Marshadow and Mega Mawile, mo mostly on the offensive side. Um, and you've got some good support Pokemon, I think, as well. You've got five Pokemon that are really good. That means you've got to bring at least one of your less good Pokemon every week. And that's most likely going to be one of your Trick Room setters. Which means you know which six Pokemon you're going against almost every week. Yeah. Uh, and that it's is something... going to make it a lot easier to prep for you. Yeah. Uh, which is something I am not a big fan of. And this is, you know, something that... Um... It's kind of differing in our uh, list to Canners, for example. Um, the fact that while it's got a Trick Room mode, uh, and a quite uh, quite good one at that, it's not particularly a versatile team. It's got a few things going for it, but because but due to its top end, uh, like top end nature, it lacks some of the things that really help it stand out. So. Um, I am going, uh, if you have anything else you want to point out at this team, or anything else you want to say? Uh, nope, I've, that's pretty much everything. Yep. Uh, three fake outers, but like, that's not, it, it's, which is a nice option to have. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you've got a lot of nice options, but you kind of know what to expect. Yeah. So, um, I'm going to make my suggestion, feel free to disagree. I think I am okay, at least for now, actually moving the Grambles up to A. I'm putting the Swampert at the top of B. I was honestly thinking like the Swampert could be either low B or high C. Ooh, you know what? I think I'll 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 agree with you that. Um, I so I'll put the I'll move the Grambles up and I'll actually put the Swampert behind the Charger Bugs. Um, so I think there's still going to be tension that I might be even be moving the Amphis up. I'll be honest. Um, but yeah, for now, uh, I think we'll uh, we'll leave it at that. So I'll probably end up like sharing the screen, and uh, you can see the list for yourself as well, just to make some final adjustments at the end. But next up, we have the last season's winner, uh, Tyler and the Southern Sandslash. Their team consists of Landorus Ferian, Mega Lucaria, Whimsicott, Dracovich, Rotom Heat, Tyranitar, Cradilly, Dotler, and Arbok. Initial thoughts? So, uh, this team struggles a lot against Fake Out. <laughs> and it doesn't have a Fake Outer of its own. Yeah! Um. So. To me, you have three duos. You have Lucario Whimsicott, uh, Landorus Rotopete, and Dracovish Tyranitar. 
And those are your, those are your options. You've got Cradilia as a, a decent option to kind of throw in there on, on occasion. Uh, which is nice for the, uh, the plethora of water weeks on the team. Um, yeah. But, but at the same time, you can't use Cradilia on you, like, with Dracovish. Because it's just going to be no. like its own vicious No, you can't. <laughs> so, kind of a bit of a weird one with the Dracovish. Um, Dotler is there to, I guess... Potentially stop Trick Room. Wimps Scott can also reverse Trick Room, but there's no fake out. Um, and while there's a couple taunt users, I believe in the Wimps Scott, I believe the Rotom Heat and the Tyranitar. Those are my uh, initial guesses, but I'm going to scroll down and try and find it. Nope, not even a Rotom Heat. It's just Tyranitar and Wimps Scott. Um, this team actually really struggles at stopping Trick Room. You've got the Dotler and the. I think Dotler actually gets in prison. But you've got imprisoned Trick Room Dotler. I believe. And like 99% of the time, it's these top six that are coming. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you've got Imprisoned Do Trick Room Dotler and you've got Taunt Winsicott. And that's it. And as I said, you don't need a Trick Room mode to be good. And you don't. Uh, you just need ways to stop it. Th that, that requires ways to stop it. And there are a total of two. And one of them rel relies on Dotler. And like... Dotler is indeed a Pokemon, by all definitions it is. It, it is. Yep, that's certainly a Pokemon. Um, so yeah, I'm not a big fan of this team. Obviously, I can respect Sand. Uh, they actually used it last season to win the league. Um, but uh, Tyranitar plus Dracovish, I don't think, is enough to really push it over the edge. I will respect Whimsicott Lucario. Um... Because it's the OG, uh, you can do the OG beat-up setup. You can just not Mega you Lucario and just go with a beat-up with the Whimsicott. Right, right. But also, you, you know, you have the Tailwind potential as well. Which pranks the Tailwind will, you know, this, this team can go fast. It's got pranks the Tailwind um, and ways to, you know, you got the Mega Lucario with the Follow Me. Personally, I'm not actually a big fan of Follow Me on Mega Lucario because, you know, this is one of the main damage dealers of the team and something you actually want to protect. Uh, yeah, this thing does not want to get hit. It wants to make hits. Yeah, so it feels like not the best use of a Follow Me mom. Unless you're specifically, like, setting up, like, a Sword Dance or a Nasty Plot with Landorus Fearing or Rotom Heat, respectively. Um... I do like to double intimidate, but like realistically, this little dude here ain't coming to any games. Yeah, no, Arbok is like not coming to any games. Whereas Landorus will come to most games. And uh, again, this is a team with six, seven, if you include Cradily, which uh, Cradily I could see coming to so some games quite easily. Um, But it's got to play around its own teammate in Dracovish. Yeah. So. If you forget about Draco Vicious Fishes, Brendan Cradilly is on the field, you have just unfortunately played yourself. Yeah. Um So while I think this team has things going for it, it has a lot of offensive potential and some uh, I would say one main supporting piece, Cradilly kind of as a second, but one main supporting piece in the in the Whimsicott, and then just a lot of powerful offense on top of that. That really doesn't have any other direction other than go fast beat down with no real variability. I'm not as big of a fan of this one. Yeah, me neither. Um, I think the the power is there. Um power is there, speed control's there. It's got everything it's got things going for it, but I don't think it's there quite yet. And it hurts me to say this, because Sand is, like, the one weather I like using. Oh, I love Sand! I, I drafted Sand for si uh, singles and doubles, but this team, in my opinion, doesn't have the best Sandmon, which is Excadrill. Yeah. I think Excadrill is the best Sandmon, because uh, I had Dracovish and Excadrill, and I bought Excadrill, like, every week, and I brought Dracovish to, like, half my matches, and to actual games where I used it, maybe, like, two... It was very rare for Dracovish itself to come out. Whereas Excadrill? Oh, Excadrill just wins games. It really does. I had a sand team very similar to this in SPS, and I had Tyranitar, Excadrill, uh, what's it called? Dracovish. Like, Excadrill did 90% of the work. Yeah. Just because Excadrill's... It's a lot more... 
versatile, whereas Dr Dracovish, it clicks one button. And that feels like a little... Yeah, until you get hit by the pranks to torment. Yeah. Um, that would actually be quite funny. Um, and I feel like a lot of what this team wants to do, a lot of them are going to be clicking one to two buttons. It's not even just the Pokemon are limited in what they can do in terms of offense or like versatility. A lot of them are going to be forced into clicking one to two buttons. Like Whimsicott, incredibly versatile, super can do anything it wants Pokemon. It's pretty much going to have to set up Tailwind and die for this team. Right. And like a lot of the time, this little dude wants to be running a focus sash, but sand makes that a lot more difficult yeah. for it. So it's gonna be rough. Um, like I say, I don't think this team. I, I, every team in this league is actually good in some capacity, but I'm also comparing yeah. it to the other teams in the league, which is you know because we're doing a tier list. Um, so the me, I want to put this. Either low B or C. I'm thinking moving up Salty Swamperts and uh, putting their empty spot with uh, this team. Okay. Um, but that means we have to take something out of B. Does that mean we're moving up the Amphis to A? I do think they are a pretty nice A, uh, a team, you know? Yep. So we'll put the Amphis up to A and we'll put the Southern Sand Slash at the bottom of B. So... Next up, we have the uh, actual replacement coach. Uh, this coach actually took over for a team, um, and as a result, kind of mostly picked up uh, a lot of their team in Grace, which uh, was, I'll consider a little bit, but not too much, because at the end of the day, we're ranking all the teams. Uh, and that is Air and the Sydney Scissors. Uh, it's honestly kind of nice to see them again. Uh, their team consists of... May Kangaskhan, Mew, Cinderace, Scrafty, Durant, Circuitry, Tangler, Dragauji, Runa Regus, and Wishy Washy. Um, if you don't mind, uh, I wouldn't mind taking the lead on this one because I know you had a big help in make, uh, helping make this team with air. I'm cool with that. So, my initial thoughts are this is an air team because it's got Trick Room modes. Um, though the two Trick Room setters are, well, I have quite like Runa Regus. One of them is Mew, and I think Mew is. I think Kana said this, going to be the centralizing Pokemon of the team because it's also the only Tailwind setter for the team. Um, it's Mew's going to be the speed control bot that this team needs. Admittedly, it can do very well, but it doesn't want to be doing that every week. Yeah, this is an issue I have found with using Mew, at least in singles, and I think in VGC, it's going to be much harder to do. Indeed. Um, finding the perfect Mew set is always a tricky one. Um, you can always imprison like anything, uh, just because you can. Um, you can do Tailwind Trick Room stuff, you can do whatever you want with Mew. You can just go offensive with it, whatever. But for the most part, it's going to be supporting. Um, so, like, do you want to talk about this maybe a little bit? Because I know you helped make it. Yeah, so first of all, I really like the options this team has. It has two fake out mon well, technically three if you count Mew, but overall two fake out mons with Kangaskhan and Scrafty. And Scrafty, I, I love that little dude. It's so good. I love Scrafty. I I mean, I had him last season. I love him. He's great. Like, Intimidate is so good, and if you want it offensively, it can go Moxie, and it can function relatively well in Trick Room, which this team does a pretty good job of setting up, in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. Um,. He can get to the Trick Room quite easily. Um, Runerigus, like I say, actually quite a solid Trick Room setter. Um, does relatively good damage as well, which is something I quite like in Trick Room modes. I don't really like it when the, the, the Trick Room support and the Trick Room setter just kind of have to sit there after uh, after they've, you know, done their thing of getting up Trick Room, and then they kind of sit there and go, well, now what? Um, Scrafty and Runerigus can actually do pretty good damage, and actually have pretty good type synergy uh, between them as well, which is quite nice. Indeed, and uh, Bruno Regis also has the option of activating uh, Dragalge's uh, weakness policy with the Bulldoze. Yep. Which is pretty and cool. Wishy -washy. Honestly underrated in my opinion. Pretty solid, actually. Uh, 30 base speed means it's really nice for Trick Room. Again, the Dragalge is quite nice for Trick Room as well. Some really good Trick Room sweepers. Um, as well as the Trick that Room attack support. And special attack. Yeah, uh, and the, generally the bulk isn't too bad on uh, Wishy Washy as well, just because of the, uh, the massive, like... 30 base yeah, it's just a low HP. Um, and Tangela I love because it forces you to run safety goggles. Yeah, um, forcing that kind of prep is, I think, really, really good. So, 
Um, and again, even if you just want to use it, you, you have the option to. So, um, some of the more issues I have um, is actually Durant. I'm not the biggest fan of Durant without Max, I'll be honest. That's fair, honestly. Uh, just because Hustle is a thing that has to be dealt with, and that is the second fastest Pokemon on the team, other than the Cinderace, which Cinderace is amazing, don't get me wrong. Uh, Kangaskhan is insanely good. It's arguably the best Mega in that. Arguably the best Mega. My personal pick goes to Ments, but you can easily make a case for Mega Kangaskhan. Uh, absolutely no, no question about that. It gives the team so much extra pressure with fake outs uh you can go scrappy fake uh, uh, yeah scrappy fake out pre mega so you can hit the ghosts as well one of the only two pokemon to do that alongside the mega lopony um this this team also has good power because high circuitry um but i say that's the main special attacker outside of trick room over like that you're going to be going into trick room for the special attackers and then going to be with, going with the fast mode for the physical attackers one thing I feel like a lot of people forget about um, Mega King is oh, it feels like it has like a pseudo serene grace because of parental bond, uh, its secondary effects also activating. Yes. Um, like it's gonna be very unfortunate when someone gets frozen by ice punch. Yep. Um, I actually do uh, kind of notice just because uh, back in VGC 2019, um, I believe the second place finish actually. Second or first, one of the two. A finalist uh, actually used Mega Kangaskhan uh, after it kind of dropped off in popularity, but other Megas, uh, they actually used Bite on Mega Kangaskhan. Oh god. They used Bite uh, both for the 60% chance to flinch and because it also broke Lunala's Shadow Shield in, uh, as well as dealing the extra damage. So. Yeah, King is very not fun to deal with it's a very bulky pokemon uh combine that with scrafty intimidate and you've got a pokemon that's going to be really tough to take down especially because you can redirect it with a tangler um but i feel like sometimes the team might lack in certain areas uh just because like some like mew's going to be forced into a support role most of the time and on top of uh outside of the supporting mew you got scrafty which is good support and then you got taxes the support's pretty solid the support solids um the offense is solid. I think it's all all around solid, but I don't think it excels at anything. Yeah, like it's a really nice all arounder team, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, I love how Cinderace can just steal opposing tailwinds if needed. Oh, because of court change. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that is certainly an option. Um, but um. I think overall it's solid. Um, I don't have too many complaints with it. Um, it might be a little lacking in some areas, it feels like. I don't know. Maybe it's just me being like oblivious to something. I'm not quite sure. Um, just, But like the team hits generally pretty hard, and it also has good bulk. Um, I feel like it's just more so some of the, op uh, some of the Pokemon are going to be quite limited in what they do. Uh, notably Mew. Mew's going to have to really carry this team on its back, and if Mew isn't able to do what it needs to... The team's definitely gonna have a lot of struggle. Yeah, he was like that one guy holding up the planet. You, you know who the, I'm talking about, right? The guy holding up the planet? Yeah, yeah, you know that one thing? That one statue of the guy holding up the planet? I don't know what you're talking about. Google I go. <laughs> I know I'm not insane. I, I know this one. I'll send it to you right now. Okay, send it to me in Discord. Oh, his name was Atlas. Oh! Fair enough. That's the dude. Yeah, okay. So yeah, um... Now I've finished talking about the Earth. Um, where would you like to put this, roughly? Uh, Honestly, I feel like B-tier, like mid-B-tier fits this team pretty well. Uh, okay, uh, so currently in B we have the Chelsea Charger Bugs at the top, then the Salty Swampers, then the Southern Sand Slash. I mean, I'm okay with bringing down the Southern Sand Slash. You want to put the Southern Sand Slash in C? Yeah. Yep. Uh, and then I'll put the Sydney Sizzles behind the Chelsea Charger Bugs. And then uh, Lord Nobody and the Salty Swampers are at the bottom of B. Um, so, last but not least, uh, we have 
The Wit Weaviles are the last of the friends that I invited to join this league and definitely one of the teams that I'm most interested to see how performs. Ah, uh, the Sweekened Sniper. <laughs> the Sweekened Sniper. <laughs> uh, so Lily and the uh, Wit Weaviles have Suicune, Torkoal, Diancy, Mega Venusaur, Naganadel, Aegislash, Indeedee Male, Pachirisu, Behem, Aridos, and Impidimp. Thoughts? Other than sniping Suicune off you? Well, uh... Torkoal and, and Mega Venusaur, it's a nice option to have. Like, you can have Chlorophyll Mega Venusaur before mega but... After Megaing, you essentially get rid of, kind of get rid of Thick Fat because of its uh, drought. Yeah. Uh, I, first of all, I have to say I love the Pachirisu pick. Oh, it's great. It's, it's such, a good, such a good Pokemon. Um, so yeah, I think that is that is fair. Um, though you also have all the Pokemon that can uh, certainly deter fire away. Such as the Suicune, which it feels like a focal point just because it's at the top there, but I don't think it is as much of a focal point as I think it initially seems. Indeed. Um, well, it definitely does a lot of work for this team, but it, the whole team, I feel like it doesn't need to revolve around Suicune. Yeah. Um, this team is fat. <laughs> this team is. Is it's is thick with about five C's. It's super bulky. And it gets even bulkier when you consider the Suicune Snarls. Yeah, the Suicune Snarls. Uh, no Intimidate, which is, you know, fine, honestly. You don't need Intimidate. Um, but, like, Snarls are going to do work. And honestly, with... What is that? Uh, yeah, two Iron Defense Body Pressers. That can kind of uh, deal with that in that sense with both Deancey and Torkoal. I've used Deancey. In 6v6. Holy heck is Deancey such an insane Pokemon. <laughs> that thing is surprisingly terrifying. Uh, Diamond Storm is a move. <laughs> it really is. Uh, Diamond Storm is an insanely good move. Uh, it can also set its own Trick Room. Um, which is the other tri Trick Room setter of the team, Behem. Which uh, won't come to every match, but I think is actually a very good Pokemon. Um, Again, this is one where I'm questioning Kana on what they said they were doing. Like, what does this team do? Uh, it doesn't seem to do anything. I'm like, have you, uh, okay, so there's Venusaur Torkoal, which can just swap into being Mega Venusaur and bulking up once it doesn't need the speed anymore. Because you can just run max HP on it and what it, stuff's still not outspeeding you. <laughs> it's also got the option for growth. Growth as well, yeah. You've got growth options, even outside of you know, the, the speed. You could just be bulky and growth. Um, you've got a Psy Spam Core with Ndidi and Behem that can set up Trick Room. Um, you've got Naganadel, which is Naganadel. <laughs> which yeah, that thing is so good in my opinion. It's a really fast offensive Pokemon that gives the team a fast Tailwind setter alongside a Suicune, which it has in a Focus and Tailwind. This team is actually really good at setting its own tr uh, speed control, in my opinion. Uh, plus, you've got Pachirisu as well uh, to, for the redirection of any of those options. Oh, uh, the team's got a lot of good slow. Po oh, <laughs> uh, the team's got a lot of good slow Pokemon. Torkoal in Trick Room, terrifying. Behem, if you get it next to Indeedy with the Psy Spam, you can just do Psy Spam things. And Behem, I think, is a really solid Pokemon. If you can't get it into Trick Room, it's just got Analytic, which does insanely good damage. Uh, and you've got Diancy. Oh, Force is something I do not wish to face. It's terrifying. Diancy, incredibly good in Trick Room, and even Aegislash, Slash, a Pokemon that can work in and out of Trick Room quite nicely. The team can. Aegislash also has like a better protect. Yeah, uh, King Shield is really good. So again, kind of supplementing for the fact that the team doesn't have Intimidate. Uh, the lower tier Pokemon. Definitely on the weaker side, uh, like uh, the Aridos and the Impidimp. Impidimp is Frisk and Fake Out, and Aridos is uh, Rage Powder. So, they exist. I think it does have Rage Powder. So, they do exist, not to the best of the abilities, but they do exist. But honestly, I th while this team is more rounded, right? Um, like, the, top, the, the team doesn't have a top-end Pokemon, which is one of my main criticisms with it. Um... 
the top end capping out at Suicune is a bit awkward at times, I feel like. Um, but at the same time, the the bulk and the offense is absolutely there. Um, so, Definitely. Uh, and as well, it's very reliable at getting its speed control, which is something that is definitely valuable. And, like, they could easily make it so, like, any battle can become a battle of attrition. And, like, in a battle like that, I feel like this team has a really high chance of pulling out a win. Yeah, I, I think so as well. I think this team is so varied in what... It, it's got very defined modes. But also, a lot of Pokemon are quite just versatile and can be brought in multiple situations. Um, even if you're planning on going for, like, Trick Room stuff, you can just bring Mega Venusaur in the back and just be like, cool, if Trick Room runs out, I'll not Mega it and just go fast. And if the Trick Room is still up, you can Mega it and still be fairly slow and just rely on your bulk. Indeed. Indeed. -y. One thing I... <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of that, I really, like, it has two fake outers, but, like, Indeed practically doesn't count as a fake outer unless you want to run inner focus because like it will set up psychic surge yeah um it doesn't have a fake out but obviously having the ability to stop opposing fake outs is quite nice um we do have a lot of terrain setters we actually have three grassy terrain setters and a misty terrain setter so it's not going to always be able to stop uh opposing fake outs in that way but if your opponent just is going to be like i'm going to bring uh, opposing terrain to stop your fake out and uh and you bring psychic surge uh, and they're like, okay, cool, I've got terrain so I can fake out. And then suddenly, indeed, he fakes, it, he fakes you out and you go, excuse me? What did you just do to me? What did you just say? <laughs> I don't think I've ever actually seen an indeed he use fake out. I have. <laughs> it's really funny. I used it, I, I saw it use um, to uh, fake out a Whimsicott uh, and then proceed to kill the Whimsicott. <laughs> My god, that's hilarious. So, um, quite amusing. Um, but yeah, this team, this team gets to play its game very well. The question of how good the game is, I think, is going to be up to actually the coach itself. Uh, Lily, I know, is actually, uh, quite well versed in VGC, but hasn't played in a while. Um, but I think this is a team that, uh, gets to play its game when it wants to, uh, and I, th I think that is very important for a team like this. Also, Lily, if you're watching this, like, if you want to trade something for that Suicune, you know, like, <laughs> I, I'm still here. <laughs> you, I know you want to make me an S tier team. Come on. To be honest, Rat, I think you're going to be anyway, because I want to put this in A. Ooh. I want to put this. Either above or below the Grambles. Personally, I'm thinking... Ooh, this is tough, honestly. So I could see an argument for above and below. Yeah. Let's see. I think I'm gonna have to give it... Below, just because uh, the Grambles have so much more, like, offensive uh, power immediately, you know? Okay, yeah, I, I think I'm okay with that. Uh, so, we're going to have the Grambles at third overall, and we can put the Weaviles uh, just below them in A. So, that means, uh, Rat, you do get to move up to S. I said you were probably going to, but, you know, here we are. Well done, Rat, you've, you've drafted an S-tier team again. Let's go! Hey, Mega Gengar is just very good, you know? <laughs> Mega Gengar is a very good Pokemon. Um, so, for the final list, we've got myself at first, um, Rat at second. It, it seems so biased, right? With the two people in the call who <laughs> give no, ourselves no. S. But at the same I just realized how biased it seems. It seems so biased, but at the same time, I think we've made our point on why we think our teams are good. Um... And what we value in teams, which is why I, you know, it seems biased, but at the same time, like, we we know what we think are good in teams, and we have built around that. Indeed. Uh, so we've got the Grambles at, at the top of A in third place, the Weavals in fourth place, the uh, Accrington, Amphro, uh, Accrington Amphis at fifth place, 
top uh rounding out the a tier top of b tier is the chelsea chub chubugs uh into the sydney sizzles and then the salty swampers rounding out the b tier and in c tier the southern sand slash and the mughal mercenaries so this being said any team can win this league absolutely because all the teams are at least good we just have personal preferences on what we think is a team that is going to more likely win the league because they are more well-rounded have a ton of versatile options and know how to play their game and can play it well. Indeed. That's not saying that the coach doesn't know how to play their game, that's so, more so the, the team knows what it's doing. And a team that is easier to use, um, in terms of like, you have to put less effort in to make it work, I think is a better team. Sometimes teams are just gonna like act on their own if that makes any sense. Yeah, you've got you've got things you can get, like, for example, like the summon sanctuaries have good modes that they can fall into, but they are preppable for. Um, and turning off your brain into autopilot mode won't always win you the game. Whereas like some of the upper teams can turn into more of an autopilot mode um in certain modes and just win the game from there so yeah that is gonna do it rat thank you for joining me for this it's been a pleasure i agree it has been a pleasure um and that will do it for this video um leave your comments down below on what you agree and disagree with um because i mean there's two tier lists which have very differing opinions on what they think a good team involves so you know there's that so again feel free to prove us wrong feel free to let us know uh either in the comments or in the ubl discord so with that being said thank you very much for watching and i'll see you guys next time